Here on Tobacco University, we're going to look at biological methods of generation for carbon dioxide. All right, let's get into using biological generation of carbon dioxide for cannabis production. As we can see here, the basic process is taking glucose, breaking that down, which is a sugar uh, monosaccharide, and breaking it down into what ultimately is going to be uh, carbon dioxide here. That would kind of be used in many of the food and beverage industry. So in general, yeast will generate carbon dioxide. So simply mixing yeast with a sugar source will produce carbon dioxide. This is an easy and low cost solution that can likely be made with materials found around many households. We can see many different uh, methods of that. We're taking a bottle, we're taking a tube, get, having that carbon dioxide being siphoned out and put directly into the grow space with really relatively simple, minimal materials. Now there are commercial sources, so there are uh, these commercial sources of biological generation of carbon dioxide that offer extended production. They use some special mycelium-based strains to allow for efficient production of carbon dioxide. Also, the process is very easy to use. Companies claim a six-month life to their products, um, and we see just a couple uh, shown here. Now, just keep in mind, because it is a biological system, uh, there will be a certain kind of uh, degree of optimum as far as temperature goes and humidity and food sources. So just keep in mind that it will produce carbon dioxide, but biological systems do have their limitations. Now, the downfall of using these biological systems, no matter what name brand or source you're looking at, biological generation is inherently variable, so your plants will not receive a consistent dose of carbon dioxide. Also, there is no monitoring system to regulate the carbon dioxide levels, meaning some points they could be very high levels, others they could be very low levels. These systems also work day and night, and carbon dioxide is only usable by the plants during the daylight hours. So you have times of production of carbon dioxide that it can't really be utilized by the plants you're trying to grow. So that helps, that reduces the inefficiency of the overall system. Now there's also with anything, you should be doing a cost benefit analysis. So while adding any carbon dioxide above ambient, around 400 parts per million, can be beneficial to the plants, with biological based products, the actual addition cannot be measured controlled or repeated. These are different things to keep in mind. While it may help you grow one cycle, uh, it's gonna be difficult to try to repeat those exact conditions. So while these systems can offer some benefits, the consistency of a dedicated carbon dioxide enrichment system will provide long-term increase in yield, assuming all other factors are not limiting. Also using a true compressed bottle system or liquid system uh, can also allow for very consistent results as well as monitoring of your environmental conditions, all which play into uh, maximizing plant production.